This is going to be my video review of the Saddleback Leather Tank Backpack. Um, this is a review I wasn't meaning on doing, but um, I figured it would be a great idea since uh, some of my previous videos about the quality of Saddleback Leather have come with a lot of questions about what exactly has changed in the quality of the leather. So I decided to break out um, one of my older Saddleback Leather possessions and one that I've had for quite a while as a representation of exactly what has changed in the quality of Saddleback bags. So Saddleback originally created this backpack uh, back as far back as I believe in about 2009. Uh, this backpack is one of the first bags that they started to create when the company started to create more of a presence online and was no longer selling on eBay. Um, couple unique things about this bag if you look closely it has one of the original logos that Saddleback Leather created um, this was then followed by what is commonly known as the script logo and finally by the modern logo which looks a lot like this except there's a company at the very end a CEO this bag represents I believe the epitome of what um, dark coffee brown is supposed to look in leather and this was one of the first iterations of this leather. So this bag is referred to online as the tank backpack, mostly because of the way it is built. So this bag, because of the many pieces of leather in which it's built and the way it's put together, basically stands on its own and doesn't ever run the risk of getting soft and floppy and falling over, and thus is referred to as a tank. It does have a few detractions about the bag itself, but, Overall, it is a great bag. So, starting very up close with the leather of this bag. If you look here, when we talk about the plasticized leather that Saddleback has now started to move to and maybe moving away from with its more current iterations, what you see here, and it's maybe a little bit harder to tell, is a very soft touch material. It's not exactly like a velvet, like some of their tobaccos are, but it is a very soft, to the feel leather. And it's something that against your hand feels smooth, but also has a little bit of traction and resistance. This is something that's missing on the newer forms of the Saddleback um, Dark Coffee Brown Leather, in which it is very smooth and just feels like plastic. This doesn't. This leather has um, a very, very nice hand feel to it. So this bag starts off with um, a handle that unlike the handle on their classic briefcase is very very far set aside from the bag and is also very soft and floppy you can see I can easily bend this in my hand and it creates a very easy way to grab the bag without you scratching your hand along the bottom of the bag. There also lacks the center ring here which makes it easier to grab the bag without your hand getting caught on anything both of which I think are very advantageous to this bag. This bag has one center strap that is easily taken off and that gets you to the inside of the bag. So this bag um, along the front has a securing center strap. Along the side here has two D-rings near the top allowing you to attach other objects to it. Uh, given the way this bag is, it's actually easy to just hang other objects off the side of this bag. It also has a pocket that is covered with a strap and a cover. This makes this pocket a little bit more secure and much harder for people to get to and just grab things out of the pocket. This pocket inside is lined with pigskin lining and actually has a lot of depth to it. You can fit your whole hand into this pocket and you can fit a lot in here. One of the biggest detractions about this bag and biggest complaints and why they started to move away from this design was the depth of all these pockets allow you to fit a lot into it, but also take away from the utility. It's really hard to organize these pockets when you know at the very bottom are objects that you are going to be able to get to regularly. This pocket is also seen on the other side as well, and essentially a mirror image of the same design in which you have an easily accessible pocket that flips up and you can just throw objects into. 
Um, also, very nicely, behind this pocket, you could actually fit even more into it. So there's a nice little slot area behind here in which you can quickly access and slide objects into. It's pretty tight, so um, this is usually just reserved for pieces of paper, newspapers, or other pieces that are folded up to be placed there. If you drop anything too far down, you lose it unless you can really dig your hand into there to get to it. Along the back of the bag, it has a couple other unique features that are unique to this bag. First, it's a backpack strap system, which is a very tough and beautiful strap. Uh, these are referred to as tank straps and are still um, sold through Saddleback on their auction website and occasionally can be found online. Um, these are very, very sought after, mostly I think because of the aesthetic look, because in terms of comfort level, actually the newer backpack pads are just as comfortable, if not more comfortable and easier to adjust sizes than these older tank straps. But these tank straps have a certain kind of toughness and masculinity and just um, this hundred year warranty look about it that has made them incredibly popular and very sought after online. Um, to the point that if you were to try to sell one of these bags on the used market without the tank straps, it would actually be incredibly difficult to sell this bag. So these straps are definitely something that help make this bag. Along the back here, you also have a nice little magazine pocket for you to fit pieces of paper that you need quick access to. This is the area of the bag that rubs against your back. So it's just one very large piece of leather across here that you can see kind of conforms to your shoulders and your back a little bit. Um, one of the biggest complaints about this bag and why this bag was eventually taken off the market by Saddlebag, I believe, was due to the numerous customer complaints about the comfort level of this bag. Given that it is a backpack um, and that is first and foremost its biggest duty, one of the issues they had was the seam that exists along the bottom of this bag. So this bottom seam here, unfortunately, because of the thickness of the leather and how it's made, if you look here, bulges outward, which means that as you carry this bag, it digs into the small of your back to the point that other leather manufacturers have actually created pads specifically for this. If you look at the square backpack, which is essentially the second iteration of this tank bag, there is a foam piece that runs right along here and this seam is missing. Um, one of the things that's very hard to give you an idea of this leather and how much it's different, if you look as I run my fingers across here, you can see just how easy it is to, to move the um, grain of this leather and create just different designs along it. And this is what was one of the very sought after looks of the Saddleback original dark coffee brown leather, which eventually disappeared as it became more plasticized. Um, downside of this leather is it, it is very easy to scratch and it does pick up scratches quite easily, but it does so in a way that um, doesn't take away from the look, if anything, adds to the beauty of the bag. Along the front side of this tank bag, uh, what you get is a large front pocket. Um, this is actually large enough to fit most laptops. So a 13 and sometimes even a 15 inch MacBook Pro, if you really squeeze it can fit in here, but a 13 inch MacBook Pro fits in here really nicely with a little bit of wiggle room. It's right near the front of your bag so it's easily accessible. It's also not in that rear pocket where it can get scratched or dinged up by any other objects. It works perfectly as a laptop bag. Um, one of the other great things about this bag is this bag came with a divider. And this divider was made of the same leather, but lined along the inside, if you look here, with plastic. This actually fits an iPad very easily. And this has kind of turned into a de facto iPad case where you can put an iPad into here, slide it as a divider into the middle of your bag, and organize your objects around it without worrying about your iPad getting damaged and it comes in a very nice leather case where you can easily access it and pull it out. Along the inside of the bag, you have two large front pockets here with um, a very adequate amount of depth 
and it allows you to put objects here that you can easily get to as well as two smaller side pockets on either side. Uh, the downside of this bag has always been the depth so though it is a small footprint it is an extremely long depth down. The issue then being that it makes it very difficult to organize this bag. Um, once you start piling objects in, you start to realize you have to organize it in a vertical manner. And as you start to organize objects in a vertical manner, you realize that it suddenly becomes extremely hard to get the objects that were near the bottom of the bag. As later iterations of this bag started to get produced, um, what they did was they actually created little metal clips on all four edges of the divider and it would clip in inside the bag. The difficult part with that design was it now made the divider difficult to move forward and back so it couldn't naturally slide and work as a natural divider between what you had put in the bag. Second of all, it made the divider incredibly difficult to get in and out. Um, if you unclick the divider, it would take a lot of time and effort and patience to click it back in. Taking it off and putting it on was both um, a very stressful and just time-consuming task. Um, these bags were made with a very smooth pigskin lining to match the outside of the bag. So the dark coffee brown bags came with a dark pigskin lining, while the uh, tobacco bags came with a lighter lining. Overall, this bag's design is very well thought out and uh, very, very tough. Um, the difficult part with this bag was this bottom square piece here, which creates its structure and everything is sewn along this bottom square, which means that it sits and holds its shape really well, but it also means that it left this back seam here to dig into your back. Uh, the other area that people absolutely love about this bag is the raw amount of leather that was used. So if you look along these seams here, some of these have five or six pieces of leather sewn up against it, which is just extraordinary. You don't see any production leather bags really with that many pieces of leather sewn together just because the quality to make a reliable stitch here and the craftsmanship that it takes is pretty incredible and the time and effort that it would take to create something that as you move down got thicker and thinner depending on where you were in the back is very, very difficult to do. So this is, uh, if you find one online, a very, very sought after bag, but a beautiful bag, and one that I hope to stay in my collection for a long time to come. So this is my video review of the Saddleback Tank Briefcase.